Okie dokie, and we meet again. Video number three of Move Language for Smart Contract Tutorial. In this video tutorial, we are going to be working with Boolean and address types without wasting any more time. Let's move. <laughs> so remember on the last video, we work on the integer and also the string type. Now what we are doing is we are going to build a different move module so then we can leave this aside and we work on a brand new fresh module file. I want to comment this test attribute. Why? Because every time that I execute aptos move test every single move file will be invoked and if there's a test function it will be ran and we don't want to keep running the function from this particular sample file so what i'm going to do for the meantime is i am going to comment this out okay and now we are going to head to the sources folder and i'm going to create a new file this file let's call this sample 2 okay perfect now we are going to initiate a new module and obviously we are going to point to our account address and then let's call this sample two. Okay. I definitely going to work with the debug module from the standard library. So I'm going to say use STD debug. And then from there, I'm going to do print. Okay. Now I'm going to work with an address type. Okay. So addresses, those are the values that will identify account IDs. How can I know the value of an address type? Okay. So let's take, for example, STD, right? If I write a test function, let's just do a test function right now. I am going to say test, right? Without any functions. I just want to run a test function to see what will happen. Okay. And I want to take opportunity of doing this print. So I'm going to do a function, right? And let's do just call this test function let's just call this test function and inside here what i want to do is i want to print address okay so i'm going to say address so we initialize the address type point to an address so i'm going to say std this is how we can print the value of std as, as the address so we can see that in string okay with that said i'm going to save this oh and by the way i have to place the pointer that references this particular value okay so i'm going to add this at std let me give it a shot let me open my terminal aptos move test boom so we definitely got the address right here is zero X one. As you remember on the last video, I mentioned that this was the first address in move zero X one. Awesome. We see the use of alias print is giving me a warning that I am not using this print. I am using print, but I am using print on the test call. How can I fix this? What I can do, check this out because I am not using print anywhere on the module. All I have is a test function right here. I can actually do this. I can set an attribute also that the import of print will be used only for test. So I can say test only. And instead of me passing this in the global scope of the module, I can define this to be used for testing. Okay. So it's only going to be used for testing. And then we should not have that warning. So let me show you. Let's go back. I'm going to clear and we will test again and see how that goes. There you go, beautiful, clean, right? Because we're no longer importing that print and not using it, right? Now it's only used for test. So that is an attribute that you can use to define imports that you're not going to apply to the module. It's only meant for testing, okay? With that said, we now know that every time, let's say now, let's say, for example, I am going to declare a global scope variable called my address. I'm going to say my ADDR, right? And this type is going to be address. So this is how we tell the type address to this particular constant. This constant, it's going to be stored in the global scope of the module. And this value, I can say my own address. I can say this net to dev address, right? So I can pass this. Remember, we start with the at, then we say net to dev address in case of this address, right? If we save this, right? Let me go ahead and add this. Instead of me printing STD, I'm going to print this value. We should see in the output, by the way, you have to define that this is an address, my address. Okay. Now we should see my address, my account address. So, so let's go ahead. I just saved that. Let me go back. Let me give it a shot again. Let's see. 
Uh, oh, very important. I forgot to mention on the last video, anything that is defined in the global scope of the module as a constant has to be in uppercase. I am going to add everything. It has to be in uppercase. Okay. So let me save it and let me pass it down here because it has to be the same. And by the way, I should not have to redeclare this to be an address. I can actually just do it this way and let's give it a shot. There we go. Awesome. So what you can see right here, it's my address that has been stored in the global scope of the module. Beautiful. Let's continue. Now that we know addresses, this is how we define with the at, and then we point to that value. We can add the whole address value with, uh, as long as I provide the at, then I'm telling move, this is going to be an address. Okay. Now let's work with Boolean true or false. Okay. Very straightforward, but let's do it with a twist. What I can do, I'm going to build a function. This function is confirm value. I'm just going to declare this to be confirmed value. And I'm going to say, let's give it a twist. Let's add number u64. What I'm going to do is I am going to pass a number and then we will have an if and else statement that says if this number is higher than zero, for example, then give me true or else give me false. I can also make it more interesting, which I can say if the value is true, then give me this number. I can do it that way as well. And I want you to return me the Boolean type. Okay. Let's do this right here. So what I can do now is I can say if number is higher than zero, I am going to return true else return false. Okay. What I'm going to do, I'm going to grab that value right here. So I'm going to say, let result. I'm going to capture whatever the outcome is of that execution. I'm going to say confirm value and it's expecting an argument. We are going to provide an argument. Let's do one. So then we know that we're going to receive true. Okay. And I'll do this. And now we are going to print that. So I'm going to say print pointer and result. Okay. So save. Let me take a look at that test. Beautiful. So we have true right here. Okay. Let's do it the opposite way. If I return choice, I'm going to say choice is Boolean, then instead give me a number back. So I can say choice and automatically this is the Boolean type. Okay. So this will be the condition choice. If I pass true, then return me one else return me zero, right? I can do that as well. So let's take a look at that. Now what I'm going to pass is the condition. I'm going to pass the choice, which is going to be true. And now because I am returning U64, I should obtain back number one else we should obtain zero. So let's take a look at that. Let's do it again. Boom. We got one back. Now let's flip it. I could do this. I could do false, right? and false will return zero, right? Because this is not going to match. Or I could do it the opposite way. I can negate. Okay. So I can say true and I am going to put a bang here. Let's see what will happen. If it's not true, give me one else, get me zero. So this will basically do the same thing and we should not obtain one. And there you go. Obtain zero. That is expected. Okay. Remember this negates whatever it's this Boolean value. One thing that I also want to show you, I can return multiple values. So what I can do here, I can say, I'm going to return first U64 and then I'm going to return a Boolean type. Okay. If it's true, right? If choice I pass true, I am going to return one and I'm also going to return choice. If it's not true, then I want you to return zero and I want you to return choice as well. Okay. Let's give it a shot. But here's the thing now, because I am obtaining two values from that return, I cannot just store that on one variable. I'll have to store that in two variables. I can do the following. I can say first value is going to be the number. And then the second value is going to be the choice, right? And I can print the number and I can also print the choice. Look at that. Awesome. Let's test it. See how that goes. What do we get? We get one and we get through. We were able to pass two values and return two values and we were able to print both. Awesome. Now it's time for a quiz. Which syntax is correct to store the return of two types in move? Is it statement A? Is it statement B, C or D? Hmm. Well, if you answer B, you are correct. This is the end of video number three. In video number four, we are going to work with function visibility. See you on video number four.